the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Tell me why I shouldn't be worried the 49ers have a good chance to win the Super Bowl. Win the Super Bowl or just get there? Win, dog. It's not, it's not about getting there. <laughs> dog, it, the 49ers have gotten to the Super Bowl two what? times and have lost both times in my adult life. I am not worried about getting there. Getting there don't matter. At this I point. can't stress this enough. I don't think I saw one Niners won the NFC West job. Good guys tweet. I don't think I saw one. Not that I expect one, but I don't like the Niners fans are like, like, like I said, I literally said a tweet like weeks, two weeks ago and after beat the Eagles. And I was like, I don't want to say it. I know you guys know what I'm saying, but I don't want to say it, but I swear to God. And like, I didn't, I didn't say it. And everyone was like, I know exactly what you're saying, dude. I'm not going to say it either, but I agree. The only reason for concern, if I was a 49ers fan right now, is just health. Like, that's really it. Like, you're going you're gonna to get a – you got the Who's the worst team. AFC matchup? I feel like it's the Ravens for them, if they get the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Yeah, say probably. Yeah. Because I think – the Ravens defensively match up with the Niners offensively better than yeah. any team that they've played this year so far, mainly because they have two linebackers worth a damn. Yeah. Like if the Niners have the best linebacker in the league, the Ravens have the second best linebacker in the league. Mm. And Patrick Queen is really coming to his own this year. Kyle Hamilton is a beast. And I just don't want to face Lamar. That is such a pain in the ass. Believe me, as a as a t- fan of a team who has seen Mahomes, <laughs> Josh Allen, Lamar, seen the 49ers death machine, who else? Um God, who else have they played this year? Yeah, those are like the four like it's Lamar- crazy the Niners just have to keep playing the best team, like the best possible team in the moment. Like they had to play the Cowboys when they had the best defense and they were on a five game winning streak. They had to play the Eagles when they were just like at their peak. Now they got to play the fucking Ravens. Like the but Niners, I, if they do wait, win what's the, the Super Niners Bowl? remaining schedule, it's the Ravens. Then uh, who else? Yeah. They, is Ravens they, Sunday they night, Monday the, night. What is Ravens? Exactly. It goes Ravens, Commanders, Rams. Yeah, they finish the next Rams. Monday night on Christmas. Oh, okay, that's awesome. I didn't wait, know you didn't know Christmas that game? No, I didn't know it was Christmas night. No, no. it's. It's, it's probably, literally all anybody's been talking about all day yes, long. Yes, game of the year. Okay. Um, I just would not want to face Lamar right now. Yeah, that that dude is playing out of his mind. And the I one, saw the outline. I'm kind of going to jump a little bit, but he is so good at making everybody else on the field look stupid. Like, he, I promise you, against the Jaguars, he was not running at full speed. He's never running at full speed in a football game. And he's just so much smoother and quicker. He his pocket movement is phenomenal. Like he doesn't need it's not like sporadic or like spastic, like Josh Allen, like scrambling out the pocket, or even Mahomes at times. It's more just like a glide. Like he glides mm-hmm. across the field. And then you also add in the fact that he is the most dangerous person with the football in the NFL. Like it's he has become not even become he is instant offense as a quarterback i'll say and i think baltimore is amongst yeah in terms of like the worst matchups for the 49ers i'll say buffalo Hmm. just because of what they've done the past two weeks not just offensively but defensively their depth has flexed their muscles they held kansas city to what 17 points and they just held Dallas to 10, 27 points to two of the best teams in football. And they did they did so against Dallas. They, they didn't give up a touchdown against Dallas till garbage time as well, by the way. And they did that without Micah Hyde. They did it without AJ and Vanessa. And they've had guys really step up recently. Like Taylor Rapp had a really nice game yesterday. Uh, uh, their linebackers uh, have stepped up in relief of Matt Milano being gone. Leonard Floyd has had two really good games back to back. He's had a really nice season actually since they brought him over this offseason. So their defense has really stepped up. And against Dallas, Joe Brady, by the way, has been such a godsend as as a, as a play caller. 
not just because he's utilizing the middle of the field more and his play calling is more innovative. He's made James Cook not just a role guy. He's made him a prominent figure in the Bills offense. James Cook has 362 yards of total offense over the past two weeks and three touchdowns. And I don't think that the game plan going into the week was we're just going to run the hell out of the ball. But once, they, but once they realize that, oh, they can't stop this, we're just going to keep doing it. I think that Joe Brady deserves a ton of credit for that because I don't think Ken Dorsey would have. And there was a lot of talk early on in the season about like, even if the bills were good at running the football, they just don't want to. And they showed against Dallas that they are more than capable of doing it. And they did it in such a, like, it wasn't just a James Cook game. It was a Spencer Brown game. It was a Mitch Morse game. It was a Deion Dawkins game. Um, and they didn't need like Josh Allen threw for 97 yards and they beat the Dallas Cowboys by three touchdowns. Like that's absurd. And it speaks volumes to how good the offensive line played, how good James cook played and how good the defense played. So if Buffalo gets hot and right now they are hot and they, and their next two games on the schedule are the Easton stick led chargers and the new England Patriots before they face Miami for what could be for the division in week 18. I Buffalo is the last team I want, I want to run into right now because obviously they got that, that, that alien at quarterback and their defense is clicking right now. And again, without Matt Milano, they've had de dealt with a lot of injuries this year. And maybe that Ty Dunn article is what they needed to give them a kick in the ass because they have played phenomenal since then. So Buffalo is the last team I want to see right now. So my biggest concern with Buffalo, especially in a matchup with the 49ers is they're going to need a non Stefan Diggs receiver to show up to the building because mm. What the Niners do so well is they they bring the aggression defensively. It's not just they play quarters. They are pressing. They are in your face. And if you can just throw off the timing and force somebody else to win that, then they kind of have you beat because then you're holding the ball longer. And then that defensive line is just going to completely overwhelm you. Um, selfishly, I kind of want to see a Dolphins-Niners matchup. I, well, I would I love kinda, that. I would I bet every dollar want, I'd ever have in my life if they did that. I kind of want to because I want to see how Mike McDaniel and the offense has grown from the last time that they faced the 49ers. The 49ers kind of blew up the Dolphins' spot last year by just pressing and playing man. But I think Mike McDaniel has found answers for that. I also He's think so they're, I felt, I also think they're a lot better at running the ball now. Dude, they're – 21 personnel or 20 personnel with a chain a chan and mostert is so freaking fun yeah it's mostert's so, not doing that against the 49ers though it's the, uh, so the, the dolphin so delivery cool. you mean it's so cool <laughs> because they just throw so much at you with misdirection and it's just so fun to watch but I'm not gonna lie. Year. I'm not gonna lie. I asked you guys to tell me why the 49ers are gonna win the Super Bowl and gave you an opportunity for oh. me to shut the fuck oh. up. No, 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 stop. <laughs> No, I let you, you and added, no, no, no. shut added, the fuck up. No, you and added I, on. You added on. I, pro I proceeded to hear you then talk about literally every other team you added on the on planet. The question. I mm. also, I, I was not the. What was the first thing I asked? So but let you me asked just another say, question. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. Because no, if the Niners play the 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 Dolphins, they would shit stomp them it would not be close the only teams i'm actually worried about in the nfl right now currently might just be the team that they're playing on christmas that really is to me the last test if they play the eagles they will destroy them if they play the cowboys they will destroy them if they play the rams the last week i don't care they're going to destroy them playing the 49ers is like having a fist fight with a chainsaw it is it like the only way you're going to beat the 49ers at this point, is if someone gets injured. That's it. There's so the, they've played every single possible team this year, and the better the team is, the worse they beat them. So, I think the Niners are the favorites, and they probably will win the Super, will win the Super Bowl because you never know whose day is going to be offensively. You never know who's going to be the star. So they they just. Sure, Christian McCaffrey's having a slow day. We'll just flex him out to receiver, put Debo in the backfield. It Brandon Ayuk is kind of 
he's kind of the forgotten man in this offense, and he is one of the better receivers in the he's NFL. He's having a breakoff season, yeah. He's having a great year. George Kittle is like – George Kittle's phenomenal. He's always been phenomenal. Um, they just – they can hit you so many different ways. The part of that, though, that people aren't talking about that I'm surprised because I'm dumb and I never expect myself to be the one leading these conversations. But, like, if you look at the teams that have played the 49ers this year, there have been close games the first two or three quarters. And eventually, teams just lose the energy. They can't keep up anymore. And that's the thing I don't think people quite understand is, like, everyone is, like, looking at these games and being like, oh, well, they played really close and they got kind of – no – they're a they're a chainsaw. It's a fist fight against a chainsaw. And eventually, whether it is Ayuk, whether it is Debo or Kittle, or it's Trent Williams not letting you touch the quarterback once, or Nick Bosa being the guy that you have to block, and then you have Cle- Cleland Farrell, who like he's playing very well this year because that's just what happens. Like they are unstoppable and the only thing that will stop them is the 49ers luck that's it mm. what's mean, the that'd be a great uniform matchup though dolphins niners we get that that's gonna be pretty they have, like, they have to wear the throwbacks yes it has to be a throwback. Ooh. i think the dolphins niners wearing the throwbacks would be great but the only thing i will say is the niners have an opportunity this year to play one of two teams that have beat them in a super bowl and I think that's way more important than playing the Dolphins. Like, mm. I think a Ravens 49ers Super Bowl matchup after the Niners beat them on Christmas, if that, I think that would be huge. Or if the Niners lose on Christmas, I love the opportunity of seeing a team play with two weeks left in the season and then meeting in the Super Bowl and it being a rematch from 50, 10 years ago. That's not bad. It's a good storyline. It'd be juicy. That'd be a fun, fun battle. And I think you can make the case that's the two best teams in. in Lamar NFL. deserves a Super Bowl chance too. No. I have so many memes stored for this game. <laughs> JP's like ready. Um, Jarrett, who you got? Flacco or DeVito as a bigger midseason QB surprise for you? This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to say, I've really enjoyed the renaissance of Joe Flacco Um, Mm. coming off his couch, joining Cleveland. And I remember uh, I was watching uh, Chris Long's podcast. It was after his first game where he just got signed some somewhere Mm. in the past few weeks. He was talking about how like he ran into Joe somewhere and he asked him like what his plans were. And Flacco said, I kind of want to keep playing. And Chris Long's (laughs) like, really? And lo and behold, obviously it happened. Well, he's played really well in the three games that he's played. Now he did have three picks against the Bears. Um, and I think a lot of that is just the fact that, you know, he's still getting the timing down with Amari Cooper, still getting the timing down with the rest of the receivers and whatnot. A lot of it just look like timing issues with, with the mm. interceptions. Um, and the fact that it didn't phase him, he then proceeded to throw just a hilarious, if you, if you go back and watch the all 22 of this touchdown that he throws to Amari Cooper in a, a window with three bears around him coming in on a, on an inbreaker, it was, I, I watched it. And I literally was like, Joe Flacco, you son of a bitch. Like he doesn't. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah. 